what's going on YouTube gardeners it's your boy Sydney from the Naked Gardener channel in this video we're going to show you our up-to-date uh, backyard garden tour now we're going to also kind of go over some of our goods and our bads and what we added uh, onto this uh, tour that you didn't get to see on last tour so let's get growing so on the last garden tour we ended up talking about our tomato alley now if you've been following us on Instagram you've been already been seeing this uh, what we've been growing back here Mrs. Naked Gardener told me to not cut this down so we decided not to do it I topped most of the tomato off so this is how tall that is going to grow uh, considering the height of these these are indeterminate uh, tomato varieties and the reason why you top them off is cut off the top you just like for instance you just take this tomato part off and it won't grow anymore just start getting bushy out from there uh, but we were going to start doing all of these in ground however when I, I did a rookie mistake when I started uh, digging with a, our auger bit and I started hitting I thought was a underground base but it was actually a cord so we had to call the city to show where they did their markings at and we just left those where they were at and decided to do the, the rest of these that were in containers these this one is our only volunteer one so we don't know what variety these are but actually there's one two three four five that are volunteers yeah there's a few yeah one okay. two three four this one just split it off in two when we moved our compost pile they just cropped up and these are so sweet oh they're like candy so cute. we're going to start saving these seeds off of the rest of these but as you can we get mad at each other if we one beat. eats one uh -huh. and the other one don't get one. Mm. Sweetest oh. tomatoes that we, we've we uh, grown by accident. That's been the rock star. Yeah, so we're going to save those. These also are very sweet and tasty as well. But the heat has mostly killed off all of these. These were the tomato uh wagner blue greens these were supposed to be the pineapple tomatoes these were supposed to be the striped uh, roma tomatoes and the ones that are in the ground uh, that's been doing very well is due to the fact that this is very clay soil and clay soil it's, it's known to be bad because it retains so much moisture However, it does have a lot of minerals, beneficial minerals and micronutrients in there for your plants. So depending on how you balance it out, it will be a rock star for your plants. Uh, these pork chop tomatoes already have some uh, tomatoes on here. You got a tomato back here and a few tomatoes down at the bottom. Tomatoes throughout here. So those are going to be good to go from there. Then we got some beef steak. I thought I saw some tomatoes on these beef steak tomatoes on plant right here but we're gonna definitely keep some of those seeds off of there next we're gonna head over to the uh, to our raised beds and show you what has happened to them and what we're going to incorporate with them all right so we're over here in our in front of the beds and we have our ginger which has been uh, doing very well it's been continued to growing in this heat it's loving this heat and hopefully by September October time frame to be ready to harvest it it just continued also shooting up other baby shoots underneath there and if you've been paying attention to our um, other uh, videos we did a drip system throughout the beds and I just added a drip system to here so that way it can keep the uh, soil nice and moist. Uh, here we got some salvias and some zanias. Uh, we added, I took some zanias from a nursery. Well, not took, I bought some. Uh, because the zanias that we had in our beds, we had a infestation of some spider mites. And uh, we just had to get some type of pollinators in here. 
and the same thing mimics over here except for right here this is our turmeric oh you bad bad grasshopper this is our turmeric over here that's been thriving very well it's actually been putting up these this one right here is a new shoot and these these two right here are new shoots off of here and then we have our sweet potato that has been it's nosy like to climb everywhere say hi to all its neighbors yeah so i put these fences in here uh these little fence trellis right here because it was coming out to here to kind of just keep it all maintained and then we've added these little fence all the way across around here and added a planter box right here with we'll drill some holes underneath there uh, so we can add either some flowers some more herbs to, to go on to there and then this right here is our failed attempt at our three sister bed it just this these branches right here have been blocking the sun during the fall fall and winter time the sun trails from here and it's lower but now in the summertime it just goes right above here so this is one of our failed i wouldn't say failed attempts but we didn't get to trim the we tree didn't get branches. to trim it because through i had my injury of my torn bicep so uh during this fall we're definitely going to be able to uh, get all of these trimmed back and up i'm gonna have to check with leslie tree surface yeah we'll check with them trying to get a quote if you don't know about them, I'll put a link in a card above that we did an interview with them. They do a lot of good service. Most of these uh, are bedding uh, across on our ground right here uh, the from them. In the pathways. Yeah. Over here is our two-tier gar container garden bed. Uh, nothing much over here. We just moved a lot of our artichokes that were in containers that was inside the garden. We moved out, out here. Got the bee bomb over here. It's starting to do it, uh, get a lot of bush here. I'm just, I wish it would hurry up and get some uh, blooms or flowers out here. We got the the uh, milkweed growing here and right here. This one has been really going good. So, uh, yep, good. I got our calendula. This one, I think, is a strawberry one. It's just growing every which way. I'm just ready for it to bloom. And then over here, we'll go to the container garden or the ladder. Here is something that I did for Mrs. Naked Gardener. We added some more areas for her to grow some herbs and for i me. think you also did it for your propagation yeah, for my of propagation. basil of a little obsession uh the spider mite has been getting taken over some of these plants as well uh did some peppermint oil spray and some uh, neem oil and some uh some uh, liquid detergent soap that didn't have any type of dye and i've been spraying regularly regularly uh, over here so it's been doing good from there it's trying to kick back so what I'm going to possibly do on special on this rosemary is probably trim it down and let it grow back up there's some Mexican oregano I might have to trim down and let it grow back up and this hot and spicy oregano I'm gonna have to do the same in our areas they should be considered as a perennial so they'll be able to um, come back each year and then we got, of course, some more zanias and some more uh, basil that I propagated from. Mm -hmm. Just continue to propagate mm -hmm. and propagate. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, well. So what this is going to be is a drying and curing rack. Washing also. Or washing and curing rack. And this will allow us to when we're harvesting any of our produce like our garlic onions potatoes lettuces cabbage or anything since it's right next to the uh hose bit right here i'm going to be able to it folds up and down i'm going to have another one even higher than this or at the about right here going up as well when we'll be able to fold down um gonna have
have some chain coming across here. It's gonna have a latch so where it can hook up. And it's just gonna help us keep from bringing any mud, dirt, uh, water, or anything uh, that's out here into the house. And um, when we have to Irritating wash it. Irritating me. Yeah. yeah. So that way we can keep Mrs. Naked Gardener happy. So uh, keep the house clean and keep the outside outside. Before we get into the uh, raised beds, another thing uh, that we did uh, was this mailbox. This mailbox I got from the, I think his name, I put the link uh, on the screen here, but it's, I believe it's the Unemployed Redneck Hillbilly Gardener or something like that. I saw that he did this and what it is, is a regular mailbox. However, when you take out a tool, you just simply put the flag up to let you know that you have a missing tool or a tool that all your tools are in here. I like that idea, so I kind of jacked it for him. I also put his link down below, so that way he does a, a few interesting gardening methods that I, I like to uh, follow on. Uh, another thing that we did this month, or actually was it last month, was the fabric shade cloth. I'll put a link of the card above. Uh, since it was getting 100 degree temperatures this month and a little bit of last month, this uh, shade fabric here helped uh, about 15 degrees cooler inside of here. Uh, our tomatoes and other plants, our, our peppers, were getting a huge hit from the sun, the direct heat or rays of the UV, so this kind of helped it out a little bit. Uh, with it being only at 40 percent so it was able to still allow some type of sunlight allowed some rain uh, even though we didn't get that much rain uh, like we did back in june and july uh, but it was able to still allow it to breathe so now we'll uh, show you the inside what's going to happen all right so we're on a regular garden bed where it's just uh we're just doing a regular method with normal gardeners, hobby gardeners are, are doing just doing a blood meal, bone meal, worm cast, and whatever type of natural fertilizer into this bed. Uh, we got some cucumbers that we're gonna allow to climb up this trellis here. And hopefully we'll have enough time. I think we should have enough time because I think our first frost date isn't until like November 17th. And then it won't really start getting cold about January, February time frame. So I think we should be good uh, on there. Our squash are finally starting to do something. They're starting to sprout up. Uh, we have a few blooms inside of there. There's no uh, female flowers just yet. There's been a few, but they just uh, fell off because I guess the, the heat. Um, all of these tomatoes, we just basically are going to give up on them. We're just, since we have the tomato alley, we're just going to pull up all of these tomatoes, plants in this bed and start prepping for our fall garden. Our, another big hit, well it wasn't really a big hit, the only thing that's really been producing very well in this bed has been the uh, red burgundy okra here. We just started to get some flowers on this uh, eggplant, but the uh, flowers just fell off I see right here passion fruit well it's flower. not the passion fruit it's a passion flower yeah passion flower yeah uh it's been we planted it this. got really happy with the shade cloth yeah we had it we started growing it last year around this time not knowing when we were supposed to plant it and it just started to um thrive at the early part of this year and really once we put up the fabric the shade fabric here so we got it sprouted going over that way and going up over here it's meeting the cucamelons over on that end yeah so the cucamelons the cucamelons they i don't know about these they're taking taking forever to do something off of it um don't know about these just yet. I think I'm gonna try to grow them one more time uh, next year. The We got them into the ground and uh, transplanted very late in this season due to my uh, tear of bicep in my arm. Uh, so we didn't really get everything into this bed to about 
Uh, you got back in April. We had the bid about the end of April, so maybe yeah. May or June that we got everything. We were at least two weeks behind and still no, about didn't. a month and a half behind. Well, the the tree limbs didn't get cut down. That yeah. really hurt us. Yeah, so we were just way behind on on that. We had some tomato plants in here. We already pulled those out. Uh, so now the peppers are having enough room to thrive. We're gonna take the rest of these tomato plants out. Oh, so that's another reason why we put up the fence here and I want to kind of enclose this area to keep Sage the cat from trying to... Oh, he pisses me <laughs> off when he goes after my lizards. Keep him off of these lizards so that way the lizards can uh, get these insects, especially these spider mites. So you can see like on this plant here, the spider mites just killed it all. We can't throw these leaves out into the compost area. We will be burning all these tomato plants that got infected with the spider mite and other diseases that may incorporate with them. So that is that on there. All right, now we're over here at the Hoover culture bed and uh, we were trying to grow peas up to these trellis here, but before we had the sh uh, shade fabric on here, the birds uh, were more courageous and had more courage to be over here than over there. So they was picking off the flower buds and everything. So we are going to probably do the cucumbers on this side next year and do the peas over that side next year on that trip. So, but uh, this one, it, it still stays continually moist, the soil. Uh, now that it's probably getting uh, into its uh, breathing habits of staying moisture through all the decaying wood. Uh, this one should be doing very well for our fall garden uh, bed uh, since it's going to be able to retain the moisture. Uh, some of our peppers here, getting rid of some of the tomatoes and our lettuce is probably going to start thriving. Looks like our lettuce is starting to thrive back. This one's the radicchio and our dinosaur kale. Out of that bed, for this season, our first one with it, what has been the most fruitful blessing from that bed? This one hasn't really done anything. Uh, we did yet. get some peppers off of it. Well, we got a few peppers off of this one, and this one was our sunbright one, mm -hmm. and it's just now starting to thrive well. It looks like it got some type of magnesium or some type of fertilizer. It needs some type of missing some type of nutrition, but tomorrow is uh, fertilizer day, so we're gonna fertilize that look like that one might have the magnet might need some magnesium and something I have to look that up to see what is miss what type of nutrition that's missing so I'll have to hit a heavy dose of that yeah. but, all right this is our sweet and mild pepper uh, container garden uh, we had to cut off a lot of the uh, pepper that were on here due to the extreme heat to kind of relieve the stress of the plant. And now uh, on this one, it's starting to have a lot of buds. This one is our California Wonder. It's starting to have a lot of buds on here now. So we should be getting some good fruit off of there. We already got one, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we got a few off of one, of, I think all of these, but they've just been so small. The heat hit right after. Yeah. And our Hungarian uh, wax one, we got a lot of good fruit off of this one before we uh, the heat got to it. And this one, I want to say this is the coral red, the big red. I think we got two off of this one. Yeah, and, but now this one's starting to flower back up. And this one's starting to get a few flowers on it. I think this one is, the, yeah, sun bright. And this one's the coral bell. So, oh, didn't you say the Nanapinos? The Nanapinos were over there. We're starting to get some fruit off of the Nanapinos ones as well. So they might do something. Yeah, now that we got the shade cloth, they're producing a lot uh, better now that we're there's no stress on them. And then we'll go, and these tomato peppers or tomato plants are going to be gone. They're just... can't wait to rip them out. <laughs> wow. Dr. Death over there is ready to get Whoa. rid of them. Once again, we'll put the, these in the, uh, the fire pit. We'll put them in the compost. Over here we have our hot peppers. Now these cayenne uh, longs are 
doing a X. These probably have been the best peppers next to the Purple Beauty. Have been the best peppers that we've been growing so far this time. Every week I have been getting peppers off of these. Those are been over the big probably take those off. Yeah, we're taking those off tonight. And then we'll probably, we'll need, if y'all know any recipes for these peppers, comment down below. Let us know what y'all have uh, been doing with y'all peppers. I think we're going to probably do some pickling or some jelly. These have been a rock star. Uh, so we like hot pepper sauces. If you have a recipe for these cayenne longs, like, please list it below because I want to know. <laughs> Her Mrs. Naked Gardener. Look at these. See, these is. I'm just waiting for them to turn red. Yeah, this one's about to turn. Almost finished turning red. Those have just been good. Another one, uh, one has been these uh, Anaheim chili ones. These have been a rock star too. Yeah, we got one. These in the containers, and we got these. Another one in the other uh, beds there. Yeah. And these would. Oh, look at this! How cute that one looked. It's a little baby. Mm-hmm. So. Over here, I did some transplant of some zucchini, but for some reason they didn't take. So we'll probably put some lettuce or so. Oh, we could put I the, some parsley because it would be nice to frame out the edges with some nice big parsley plants because we're going to be harvesting the ginger and the turmeric right around the same time yeah oh i was thinking even some of the giant red mustard probably. oh i love those yeah yeah so we could probably even i'm do, a huge fan of that do some of that in there that one's kind of dry that one's wet i don't know why uh these uh habaneros i can't we can't get any fruit off of these i don't know Truthfully, what is, it's been emotional all yeah it's season. like season i could tell when it's been too hot because it'll just look all sad and I'll water it and then the next morning it'll pop up and then the, when it gets hot during the evening it just... I mean like it shows its emotions daily. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not sure when they're going to get any fruit off of these but we'll be happy to get it. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was these? These are the also the ancho grandes. We yeah, haven't gotten any peppers off nothing of these. On that but one. I can see some flower starting to get some flowers on there and right here. So pretty soon we might. Alright, so we're over here uh, with the worm tower bed. And this bed has been producing uh, very well out of all of these beds here. I think it has to do with the fact that we have our uh, worms in here going you know we're feeding it the food waste and if you don't know how we built these we'll put a card above to show you how we uh, constructed this bed the big big winners from this bed has been the shishito peppers and we're already getting more peppers off here here like the cayenne peppers yeah. every week we are getting a few and see if we're getting some more i need to find out what kind of fertilizer I'm, or uh I nutrition. I saw one a moment ago yeah there it is what? no they're no. just flowers on here oh, right now flowers. Yeah, I yeah. Took it off. but uh this one and then these purple beauties which are delicious these purple beauties they start off green and then they get into this dark purple haze on there these has been uh, very oh here goes another one uh, this one has produced like six different peppers this season so yeah far. and we have another one on this bed that um, we got morning. a few off of there but not as much and we I think it's because we get the sun, like I said before, we get the sun path going this way. And with the tree being right here, it doesn't get that much path. So we're learning about which beds is to grow best in, what fruit to grow best in. And so far, we've been noticing that on the front edge on here, is, it does a lot on here. So, um, Yep, and then we got the spaghetti squash. This spaghetti squash is what's 
It acted like it was going to do something. Yeah, and then it's this right here is sprouted off and going over through there. And now it's climbing up. So hopefully we'll get at least one spaghetti squash by the, by the fall time to help us get through. We were trying to grow some beans right here to kind of grow up with this trellis. I think only one, so this one only survived so far. And it's not doing anything. Oh, they got another one right here. But it's not doing anything. I don't know if something's eating it or what. Oh, I've got another lizard somewhere. I just heard it. Hmm. But that is that on there. Then all these tomatoes in this bed is going to be ripped out as well. And we're just going to start planning for... I think even we're going to get rid of the okra in this bed as well because something has been eating it and I don't know what is going on with it so we'll just go from there. So next we'll go over to the herb garden. This is our herb garden that we did a while back and this allows Mrs. Naked Garden and myself to propagate more herbs and mm. basil. Since I love her pesto sauce and, and everything. This was a uh, from a uh, cutting that we did off of a tomato. I think it was off of this tomato plant. And it's, if y'all saw from our last garden tour, it was like about right here and it's just sprouted up. The basil in this bed have been doing wonderful. The basil, the uh, rosemary, the tarragon, the had thyme, more sun. it's just doing well. Over here, same stuff. just the mimicking the same basil and everything is just not growing as bountiful as the one over there. Possibly the sun, who knows. Uh, I would think that you have the same amount, but I guess it gets more of the afternoon sun because the sun winds up being right there. Uh, and then so, the fence, I think, blocks part yeah, of the sun. Yeah, the fence sun. probably blocks it off. So what we're going to do next uh, season is put shade tolerant type of uh, herbs like uh, more tarragon parsley. See if we could do some parsley, cilantro, and some mm -hmm. oregano. That one's bed. just gonna be basil because it's been very yeah, basil very probably fruitful. be in this bed. Yeah. But we'll put those shade tolerant plants in here. Uh, these tomatoes we're gonna get rid of. Take oh. those last tomatoes off. We'll probably even take these tomatoes off and let them uh, get ripe in the in the house. They were kind of tart. Yeah. That's the tomato delight. Garden delight. Both garden of these delight. are garden delight. Yeah. And then over here we got uh, some flowers to go with to help bring some pollinators into the uh, yard here. These are. Latanias, Latanas, whatever, however you say. They and, smell really sweet. And I then you got uh, Mrs. Nicky Gardner want, wanted those coxcomb plant, uh, flowers. I want red coxcomb in the front of the house. Yeah. I so, like them. They're, they, uh, they went off and they came back, so I like that about them. I wonder if I could do some propagating off of these. And I for, these are pentas. Yeah, that's what these were. These are. These are pentas. Help bring some hummingbirds and some um, butterflies uh, through here. And of course, we got the oregano on the far end, mint right there that we had cut back and it's starting to come back. The sage we cut down is co coming back. And our mint we had cut down is coming back from there. And then over here was one of our tomato challenges. This one was supposed to be the pork chop one and nothing. We failed, we lost. Yeah, we lost. We were supposed to be harvesting on the 5th of August and it's past that now. This one I was excited about. This one was the pineapple one and nothing happened on this one. And this one is a more pentas that uh, we're trying to bring some pollinators and they're starting to bloom back uh, from um, here. When did you get those? They were over there. I just moved oh, them over okay. here. Oh, okay. Sure. You didn't propagate or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And our last thing that we have is our worm bin. Oh, yeah. This has been... So, I think I, I had some ants out here 
I left it open and I came home from the gym and I saw some birds around here and I think they got a few of the worms out of here I haven't seen any more since then so we will see I had to put some cinnamon around here because the ants was trying to get in there if y'all follow like I said if y'all follow us on Instagram y'all see how cinnamon helps uh, eliminate uh, ants so if you like these kind of garden tours, we'll do them uh, monthly and we'll put a playlist of our other garden tours in the card above. Until the next time, let's grow together.